Thing. Back on the court yesterday after serving an eight-game suspension for what the Nets termed the harmful impact of his conduct after a tumultuous couple of weeks, Kyrie returning to the starting lineup scored 14 points in the Nets' win before the game. Kyrie offered another apology for his actions. Take a listen. I just want to uh, offer my uh, deep apologies to all those who are impacted uh, over these last few weeks. I don't stand for anything. Uh, close to hate speech or anti-Semitism or anything that is anti going against the human race. Uh, <clears throat> I feel like we all should have an opportunity to speak for ourselves uh, when things are assumed about us. And uh, I feel it was, it was necessary for me to stand in this place and take accountability for my actions um, because there, there was a way I should have handled all this. I meant no harm to any person, any group of people. Um, and yeah, this is a big moment for me because I'm able to learn uh, throughout this process that the power of my voice is, is very strong. The influence that I have within my community is very strong. And I want to be responsible for that. Uh, in order to do that, uh, you have to admit when uh, you're wrong in, in instances where you hurt people and it impacts them. Okay, well, uh, Wendy, right there I saw a remorseful Kyrie not reading from a script, speaking from the heart. Are you confident that he won't be a distraction from this point forward for the Nets? No. I mean, I, I mean, he's been a consistent distraction since he got there. I do think, hopefully, that this episode has been put behind the Nets, and he certainly spoke about this in a way that um, should be able to put it behind it. If you watched the game last night, the Nets played with tremendous energy and team-wide um, you know, connectedness, and so they looked like they'd put it past them. But there's two things that have kept this Nets team from achieving what it should over the last two or three years. One is injuries, and you can't control that. That's as old as the game itself. The second thing is off-court distractions, which Kyrie has consistently caused this team, and it's been exacerbated by the fact that the Nets have generally not held him to account. Um, he did not get suspended for the tweet that he put out. He got suspended for the way he handled the backlash to it. And so... This suspension appears like it's been able to reset things, but how can I predict anything with Kyrie Irving? The one thing I will say is the dashboard is green right now for the Nets. Now, they played a team yesterday that was missing its three best players. The Grizzlies were not the Grizzlies yesterday, but let's put that aside. Since the, the coaching change, since Jock Vaughn took over, they have gone from the number 30 defense, and they were dead 30, to number five. They've been the number five defense in that span of about three weeks now. And their, their three-point shooters have gotten healthy. So I'm watching Ben Simmons yesterday pick the ball off the glass, run down the court, and kick to a three-point shooter. Joe Harris shooting over 40% from three. Seth Curry shooting over 40% from free, three. Yuto Wananabe, who's been one of the finds of the offseason to this point, uh, who's leading the NBA in three-point shooting, shooting 57% from three. They look really good. They have looked really good in the past, and they have consistently shot themselves in the foot for years. So it is a very good time for them to go to Philadelphia because these Sixers are missing three of their top four players and Joel Embiid, who should be able to play, sprained his ankle on Saturday night. The only thing the Sixers fans are probably going to be able to do in that game is boo. But this is the best position that they have been in in a long time. They have tried everything they can to hold this team together, and it's actually starting to take a little bit of root. And so now the pressure is on, let's not screw it up. Let's, you know, you can't control injuries. Let's not have any more self-inflicted wounds. And if there are, the Nets organization has to hold the players to account to not make it spread. They have not done that before. So now I will sit there and watch. But Molly, I can't give you an answer and say yes, because that is not the way it's always gone. Okay. There's no way in hell Kyrie Irving won't be a distraction. He can't help himself. And, but the reality is, or the question is, what kind of distraction will he be? Will he be the kind of distraction? If you're a distraction and making headlines, but you're showing up on the court and balling, that's easy to stomach. The problem with the distractions that Kyrie Irving has caused, it's always led to him missing games. That's the key. Somehow, some way, 
I was joking around about this, Wendy, when he got himself suspended, because even though I understood the suspension, I definitely spoke out about these conditions that he had to meet and all of this other stuff. I felt he, they were trying to emasculate him, whoever they may be. And I did not appreciate that at all because I didn't feel he deserved that. I don't give a damn what anybody says. He deserved to be back playing basketball and working for a living. But I did joke that, once again, he's found a way to miss work. Because that's what he does every single season. In his 11 years in his career, he's, now, he's only played over 60 games four times. The other seven years, he's played 60 or less games in his career. It's just what he does. Having said all of that, I will tell you this. He could still be a positive distraction. He hasn't been the last two games he's played. You could tell everything was getting to him when they played against Chicago. His last game, they lost by nine. He shot, what was it, like, what, two or 12 from the field. Couldn't hit anything. He comes back after this eight-game absence. He goes up against Memphis, only hits five or 12 shots. That's not Kyrie Irving. Finishes with 14 points. We know he's far more electrifying than that. What I'm proud of is Jacques Vaughn's got these boys playing some defense. Jacques Vaughn is doing a hell of a job thus far. We have to give credit where credit is due. We'll see as the season progresses, you know, how things change or what, how effective he's going to be. But, uh, you know, throw out the 153 points they surrendered to Sacramento. I'm very pleased with what I've seen from, from, Z, from Jacques Vaughn and what he's been doing as a coach. KD is KD. And Ben Simmons, I think, is going to go a long way. If he can get through tomorrow night, where he plays reasonably well, and that vitriol and that venom that inevitably is coming to his way tomorrow in Philly. I'm talking about from the time he rolls up in the town, they're going to know where the team hotel is. They're going to know where the team bus is. You're going to see people outside the hotel heckling him all the way to his arrival at the arena, to him coming on a pregame court to work out, to him showing up in the game. When he leaves the game, they're going to be heckling him then. They're going to go after him in ways he's never experienced, but in the end, it's going to be okay if he yep. can get through that. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.